<coughs> so, hi. What I thought I'd do is an updated version of how to make graphene oxide. Uh, the main reason for that is it's almost a year since I did the last version and things move on and I've come across an improved method that I thought I would share with you. It's still a Hummer's method, but it's an improved method. And the other thing is the previous two videos that I did uh, were done with an old camera and an old microphone and both the audio quality and the, the visual quality isn't very good and I've had quite a lot of people asking me to, to redo it. Um, it's no point in redoing older versions, so I thought um, now I'm using this newer version, then I'd share that with you. Now, the newer version uses um, 5 grams of graphite. Two and a half grams of sodium nitrate and 115 milliliters of sulfuric acid. And that's 98% concentration. Now these things are relatively easy to get hold of. Um, you can buy your graphite from lots of places. This one you can get at uh, a garden store actually, it's fertilizer. Uh, this one you tend to have to order. Uh, you can try battery acid and you can try um, strengthening the battery acid by using freeze distillation. But to be honest, it's actually quite simple to order that stuff, so just go right ahead and order it. Now what you do is you add those three things together and you stir it for 30 minutes. Now I have bothered to make a magnetic stirrer in a previous video, which I've shown you how to do, and I'll stir with a magnetic stirrer. If you don't have a magnetic stirrer, then just sit there and stir it for 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes, what you do is transfer it to an ice bath. And once it's in the ice bath and cooled down, you add 15 grams of potassium permanganate. Now you need to make sure that the temperature of that doesn't go above 20 degrees centigrade. Um, this, uh, people have said this a lot, and I agree with them. Um, when the permanganate is in this solution, it forms a heptoxide, and that's explosive. But it'll only do that if it goes above 55 degrees. So keeping it below 20 degrees keeps the thing safe. And, and this is your cold stage. So you add your 15 um, grams of potassium permanganate, and you add it slowly, making sure that the temperature stays below 20 degrees centigrade. And when you've done that, you then raise the temperature to 35 degrees centigrade and stir it for another 30 minutes. So at this stage, you've been stirring it for about an hour, an hour and a half, something like that. Now, after it's gone through its medium stage, which is this 35 degrees um, um, temperature here, what you do is add um, 230 milliliters of water. And you add that slowly, stirring it in as you go. Now, <coughs> once you've added the water, you move to the high temperature stage. So again, we've had the ice bath as a low temperature stage, 35 degrees is a medium temperature stage. We'll add the water slowly, and then we raise the temperature to 98 degrees centigrade. And this is your high temperature stage. And once you've got it at 98 degrees centigrade, you stir it for a further 15 minutes. And at the end of that 15 minute period, you then add 400 millilitres of water and 50 millilitres of hydrogen peroxide at 30%. And that's the end of the reaction. Okay? So you're going to be adding quite a lot of uh, volume of fluid. So you need something that's going to um, hold about a litre. And at the end of the day, you're going to have been stirring it for about an hour and a half, two hours. So it takes about two hours to prepare it, and it uses about a litre of volume, and it uses um, graphite, potassium permanganate, sodium nitrate, sulfuric acid, and hydrogen peroxide. So you're going to need five things in order to do it. Again, the hydrogen peroxide is actually not that difficult to get hold of. Um, this is actually a food grade percentage. So you can buy the 30% um, hydrogen peroxide, again I buy mine over the net, and you can buy it over the net actually really, really easily. Then once you've done that, what you need to do is filter it. So you get yourself a funnel, put in some filter paper and filter it out. 
Um, once it's filtered, what you want to do is pour on some one molar hydrochloric acid, about 100 millilitres, and you pour it on and swish it around. What this is doing is washing out any of the metal salts that have collected in there, because you've been using potassium and you've been using sodium, you're going to have some residual metal salts in there. So you wash it out with some um, hydrochloric acid, one molar, about 100 millilitres, and you just wash it out until you wash out the salts. And then you wash it out with a lot of deionized water. By a lot, I mean about 800 mils a litre, something like that. You wash it out with some deionized water. And you'll have a cake of graphene oxide left over. What you need to do with that graphene oxide cake is drop it into some water and bath it for about 30 minutes or so, and that will disperse it through. Okay, so that's the basic procedure we're going to use. And like I say, it's a, it's a three-stage thing. We've got the cold stage, the medium temperature stage, and the hot stage. And in the cold stage, we add our graphite. Sodium nitrate, sulfuric acid, and then at that stage we add the potassium permanganate. So that's what we add together on the cold stage. The medium stage, all we actually do is stir it. And that's, remember, that's at 35 degrees. That's in an ice bath, but it has to be less than 20 degrees. You need to keep it there. Okay, it's easy to keep it there, just add it slowly and keep it adding ice to your ice bath. It'll stay below 20. So your cold stage is going to be below 20, your medium stage is at 35. Then once you've stirred it, you add your water and raise your temperature to 98 degrees centigrade. And then you stir it for 15 minutes. And that's it. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay. So, in that jar we have 5 grams of uh, graphite powder. And because I'm working with acids, you'll notice the thick yellow gloves. And to that 5 grams of um, graphite powder, we add 2.5 grams of sodium nitrate. So just chuck it in there. And then to that, we add 115 millilitres of 98% concentrated sulfuric acid. Now at this stage all we're doing is mixing it for half an hour. It will heat up a little bit, but not enough to really worry about. It's just going to get warm to the touch. And give that a swirl around. Now when I turn on the stirrer, the um, acid in there is going to splash up a little bit, so drop the stir bar in and put on a lid and then set the stirrer going. And there we go. You just leave that stirring now for 30 minutes. So that's been stirring for half an hour and um, then I put it in the freezer for 40 minutes to cool the acid down and to make sure that it's all nice and cool. And then it's in this ice bath. Now there are um, two critical stages with this particular technique and this is one of them. We need to add um, 15 grams of potassium permanganate in that and we need to keep that to 20 degrees centigrade or lower. Now there's the potassium permanganate and I've chosen this um, powdered form because it's easier to add. It goes in as a nice little stream. If you use crystals, it's actually quite a large bit that drops in there. You can do it with crystals, but I prefer this powder. Now, it's quite difficult to add it that way, so what I do is pop it onto a bit of paper and then fold the paper up. And that allows me to tap in a small amount each time as we go. Now, as you add this, add it slowly and stir a lot as you keep on adding. So you just tap a bit in and stir. You don't want um, to chuck a load in. If you chuck a load in, the reaction will run away with you. Um, the lump of potassium permanganate you put in there will locally uh, react 
and it will fume like mad. It'll fume um, white because there's a lot of steam being generated and you'll get clouds of um, brown vapour which is in fact go but you can't um, can't control the reaction and it'll just billow out of the top of the jar so you need to add slowly just tapping a little bit in and stirring as you go making sure that you don't tap too much in and to keep that temperature down below 20 degrees centigrade and that's why it's in the ice bath now it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes to do this so that's what I'm going to do um, you might notice I'm outside incidentally and the reason I'm outside is later on this actually fumes a little bit not massively because you're controlling the reaction but you're better off outside than you are inside so again just tap a little bit in and not a massive amount and stir it to make sure that it's spread throughout there and that that reaction stays below 20 degrees like I said, this is one of the critical stages. If you get this wrong, it'll fume like mad and you've ruined it. You'll have to throw it away and start again. Now, as you add the uh, potassium permanganate, the liquid in there will go to a kind of deep emerald green colour. So it'll change from the black colour that we have with the graphite in suspension to a deep emerald green. So I'm going to take the next 10 or 15 minutes and do that and get back to you when it's done. So, I've um, successfully added the potassium permanganate to um, that solution, and as you look at the side of the glass, you can see that the solution is green, which is the colour that you want. Now we're going to put this in a 35 degree water bath to raise the temperature of that to 35 degrees. As the temperature raises, it'll begin to fume a little bit, and it will effervesce, it'll give off bubbles of gas. This solution will turn to a brown colour. Then as the half hour progresses, it's um, going to thicken up into a kind of brownish purple paste. And all you do is pop it in the water bath, and you really have to stir it now for half an hour. It takes about half an hour. 35 degrees, incident incidentally, isn't very warm. It's um, just a little bit above body, body temperature. So if you put your hand in there, then you'll be able to feel that it's just kind of feeling warm. Um, I don't have a hot, uh, water bath, and so this is the way that I choose to do it. Uh, I've got a thermometer, I'll pop that in there every now and then and test the temperature, and if the temperature drops too far below 35 degrees, I've got a um, kettle of hot water, and I'll just add a little bit of hot water to bring that temperature up. So that's how I plan on controlling the temperature of that water bath. And like I say, all you have to do with it really is sit here for, for 30 minutes and stir. Okay, I've been stirring this about 10 minutes. I don't know if you can see that the gas has already been given off. It's fuming slightly, which is why I'm outside. And it's going from a green to brown colour. So here we are, five minutes further down the line. And as you can see, the bubbling's quite pronounced. The temperature's really steady at uh, 35.5. I haven't actually had to do anything with it. I uh, imagine the heat of the reaction is actually heating the water as well. And we're getting a degree of expansion there, so as this bubbles and froths, it's uh, getting bigger in the jar and form, forming quite a foam there. So just keep on stirring it, and you can see it thickening up nicely as the reaction gets going. And as that thickens, it's going to get actually fairly stiff, and you're going to need two hands to hold it to finish the stirring process. But that's what it's like about halfway through, you see, quite thick, foaming away, and uh, it'll get even thicker than that. So there it is, after half an hour stirring, and that paste has got really quite thick. The thickness of the paste, incidentally, will be determined by the size of your particles, how big the particle size is in your graphite powder. The smaller the particle size, the thinner the paste, the thicker the particle size, and that paste is going to get really quite thick. Uh, you don't really need to worry about it, just stir it for half an hour and then when it goes this kind of uh, purpley brown colour, you know you're there. So that's the cold stage and uh, medium temperature stage finished. Oh, incidentally, you might notice I'm wearing um, some heavy duty gloves and that's because of working with these chemicals. Now what we need to do now is add 230 millilitres of water to that. And this is the second critical stage. If you chuck all of that water in there at once, what you'll actually do is kill the reaction. What you need to do is add the water slowly. So you just add a little bit. 
<coughs> and that is going to get really hot because it's a um, exothermic dehydration reaction. Now as you look at that, you can see that that's gone very brown. Okay, there are streaks of brown in it. Those streaks of brown are the go that you're producing. So depending on how quickly you add that water will depend on um, how much of that turns into graphene oxide. So if you add too much water too quickly, you'll actually get very little graphene oxide, you'll get an awful lot of graphite left over. So adding the water a little bit by a little bit and stirring it will mean that that reaction um, takes place and the graphene, um, sorry, the graphene oxide will be formed. So take your time over it, just add a little bit and keep on stirring it. Now, as the reaction progresses, again, it'll be quite violent, it'll get quite very hot and it will begin to froth and um, effervesce again and you get volume expansion and the colour will change and it'll change to a kind of orangey brown colour. So it's going to take me a little while to add that water because I just want to add it little bit by little bit and let that reaction go. So I'm going to do that and show you various stages. Okay, this is after five minutes and I've added 50 millilitres of water and as you can see uh, from the fuming it's getting very hot in there. And as you stir it, you'll splash it around the glass and you'll see that it's a kind of a golden brown colour, which is obviously what it should be. Now, that will get more violent than that. OK, now we're 15 minutes in. I've added 100 millilitres of the water and you can see it's starting to go this nice orange-brown colour. And that's the kind of colour that you're looking for. OK, as soon as that got thin enough to put back on the stirrer, stop what I was doing and put it back on the stirrer. Um, mostly because it's much easier to manage once it's stirring and my stirrer isn't strong enough to um, stir that thick paste. So once the paste got liquid enough I put it back onto the stirrer and just turned the stirrer on. Now this has been running for 30 minutes now and I've added uh, 130 millilitres of the water. So don't rush the water addition because if you do you'll be quite disappointed by the um, results. The results will be a kind of uh, greenish-yellow colour uh, with a lot of silver floating in them and that will tell you that the yield is very low. So as you can see, it's actually going this beautiful orangey-brown colour and that's exactly what you're looking for. So take your time, add the water a few millimetres a few millilitres by a few millilitres and keep on stirring it. If you don't have a mechanical stirrer, you're going to have to stir it by hand. Uh, this makes it an awful lot easier for me because I can add a bit of water and have a cup of coffee. So it's actually quite pleasant. And I just leave it stirring and adding a few millilitres of water as we go along. And as you can see, that beautiful golden brown colour is indicating that we're getting a good reaction. So we should have a good yield out of this. OK, and there it is at the end of about an hour and 15 minutes with 230 millilitres of water added. And as you can see, it's this beautiful, deep, reddish brown colour. Now, this might seem like uh, a relatively simple procedure, and in fact it is, but don't get me wrong, um, it's not a safe reaction. When it was that green colour, that's when it contains the explosive compounds. So if you get it wrong, it'll be violently wrong. It'll fume everywhere and it could explode. So proceed with caution. Uh, follow the steps as you've seen them and you're going to get the results that you, um, you're looking for. If you try to rush things, like rushing adding the potassium permanganate or rushing adding the water, then you're definitely going to result in disappointment. Now the next thing that we need to do is to finish off this by putting it in a water bath at 98 degrees centigrade. And that's exactly what we're going to do. OK, that had um, 15 minutes in a water bath, and then I added 700 millilitres of water to it. And that's the result that we've got, this nice golden brown. Now, to kill that reaction, we need to add 50 millilitres of 35% hydrogen peroxide. changes from this orange brown to the orange yellow. And what you have in there is a solution of graphene oxide. So that's it done. All we now need to do is um, filter it 
wash it with one molar hydrochloric acid, then wash it with um, deionized water until the uh, pH of the deionized water coming out is around six or seven, something like that. So approaching neutral. Now, the reason I went through this is, as I say, it's an updated method and it's much better than previous methods. And my up and coming videos are going to use quite a bit of graphene oxide. So I thought I'd better do something to show you how to make this stuff much more easily. But that's it. Hopefully that helped.